Hello and welcome to Paleo Logos. I'm Peter and thanks for joining me today as we talk about the genus Paranthropus. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on some great content I have coming soon. Louis Leakey discovered this species in the 50s while he was excavating at the famous site of Old Vi Gorge in Tanzania. He had been finding lots of stone tools, so when he came across this species, not this particular individual, but another individual of this species, he immediately thought that these creatures must have made the stone tools which is possible considering that living extent apes such as chimpanzees can often chip rocks together in such a way to make some sort of very primitive looking stone artifact. But there was another species which Louis soon found at the gorge, Homo habilis, which scientists then thought actually was the real maker of those stone tools. I have here my modern human skull to show you some of the differences which set them apart. First of all, Paranthropus had a very small brain. You can see there it has a very tiny little brain, unlike the huge brain of the modern human. Their brain was tiny, I think even smaller than that of the Australopithecines. They had a very heavy brow ridge, they had a very wide face. You can see that when you compare their face, it's much, much wider than that of the modern human. And the reason they have such a wide face is because of these arches here. They have something called a zygomatic arch, which we do too, but theirs is greatly expanded. So when you look at the skulls from the top, you can see there how they have these huge arches that stick out on either side of their face. And those are the arches for your jaw muscles and they had huge jaw muscles compared to us, which is why they had such big arches. When we look at that foramen magnum on the bottom of the skull, we see that Paranthropus had a similarly placed foramen magnum to that of modern humans. That is, remember, the place where your brain stem comes down and meets your spinal column, and it's placed differently whether a creature walks upright or not. So because they're Foramen magnum is placed similarly to that of the modern human. Many paleoanthropologists, most, think that Paranthropus could walk upright. Unfortunately, we haven't found a whole lot of postcranial evidence from this genus. We have lots of isolated pieces, but not a lot of parts that we can actually super reliably associate to all belonging to this genus. There's been one particular skeleton which I can think of. Its name is KNMER 1500, and that has quite a few different pieces from around the body, but generally we do not have a lot of evidence about what exactly the body of these creatures look like. Scientists think that when, when they stood up, they might have been around four and a half feet tall if they were males, but we really don't know a whole lot about the body. I do have one cast of a pelvis from this genus, which I'll show you in a minute here. When we compare the jaw of a modern human to that of a Paranthropus boisei, we see a lot of the same differences that we see among hominids. One is, of course, the common lack of the chin. Another is um, this presence of this shelf behind the teeth in the front. Modern humans don't really have that, but in chimpanzees and australopithecines and paranthropists, there's a little more of a, a, a slope, a little area back here behind those incisor teeth right up here. The thing that sets paranthropists apart is the massiveness of the jaw. It completely dwarfs the modern human jaw when held up to it in comparison. You can see it's just way, way bigger. And the teeth, especially, these giant molar teeth are unimaginably huge. I mean, compared to our little tiny teeth here, these teeth are just giant. They're 
the size of a quarter. They're simply massive in comparison. And so Paranthropus had a unique diet that it was specially eating, and these teeth allowed it to sustain itself upon leaves, fruits, nuts, and all these things. But it apparently had some unique diet that set it apart from the Australopithecines, for example, which is why it had these giant, huge teeth to chew on all these objects with. Let me show you this jaw in articulation with that cranium I showed earlier. When I hold these together, you can kind of see what a Paranthropus boise eye would have looked like. And we can see that they were quite massive. They had this little tiny brain, but they had a giant face, giant teeth, a giant jaw. And you can see here when we fit this together how your muscles for your jawbone come up through here and through that zygomatic arch. Now, the muscles for their chewing attachment were so large that they filled this whole space here and attached all the way right along the top of the head. When you look at this, it looks rather distinctive because you see it has this crest along the head here. And when we see this, we know that it's because their jaw muscles were giant. Their jaw muscles were so big that they attached all the way to the tippy top of their head. In modern humans, our jaw muscles basically fill a little area right here on the side of our head. But their jaw muscles were so huge that it formed a crest on the top of the head where the muscles from one side and the muscles from the other side met. Paranthropus boisei isn't the only species in this genus. We also have Paranthropus ethiopicus and Paranthropus robustus. This is Paranthropus ethiopicus. It is, to my knowledge, the only such skull that we have of this species. We have, I believe, a jaw, but this is the only skull that is known from this species. We have, once again, that very flat face, those giant areas for the chewing muscles to come from, but in this individual we see a smaller brain, even smaller than Paranthropus boisei, and we see an even larger crest this time. So the crest this time is even taller, even more pronounced. So their jaw muscles now went even closer to the top of their skull, and that's why they had this huge long crest on the top of their head for jaw attachment. That's something that we also see in modern gorillas, for example. They have a crest on their head where their muscles attach. And gorillas are, of course, eaters of all this vegetation, perhaps similarly to how Paranthropus would have dieted. This is a cast of a pelvis from a Paranthropus boisei individual, I believe. And it is a very nicely preserved pelvis. And when we hold it in configuration, I believe it's the right iliac blade here, you can see here, this is how it kind of compares to the modern human pelvis. One thing that is distinctive about this that shows that it's like a modern human pelvis is this notch right here. It's called the acetabular notch. And in chimpanzees, it's shaped quite different from modern humans because chimpanzees' pelvis are quite much longer. So the shape of this knot shows that it has a somewhat human-like configuration of the pelvis, once again informing us that this genus probably walked upright, like the Australopithecines. I hope you've learned a little bit about the genus Paranthropus. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe because I have a lot of great content on the way. Thanks for listening.